Welcome to my fireside. My name's Nanny Annie and I'm going to share with you one of my stories, one of my tales of ghostly goings on at this end of St Andrews. Now, away back in the days of Mary Queen of Scots, there lived at this end of town a bonnie lassie. She belonged to a well-known local family. And my, she was bonnie. She had no end of admirers. Lots of young laddies want to marry this lassie. But she turned them all down. Until eventually, she fell in love with a young student lad here at the university. And he fell in love with her. Well, the preparations for the wedding were well underway when the laddie got cold feet and decided that maybe marriage wasn't really for him. So he headed off back across the Forth to his own family in East Lothian. Well, the lassie was heartbroken. Oh, what was she today? If he was not wanting to marry her, then she wasn't going to marry anybody. She would tack herself off to a nunnery, become a nun, become a bride of Christ. Well, her family, they were devastated. They tried to talk her out of it, but she was having none of it, and she left home. Well, they got in touch with a laddie in East Lothian, and, well, he was devastated too, and guilty. And he said, he assured them that he would be back in St Andrews as quick as he could, and he would grab the lassie and he would marry her. Well, her mother and father were delighted. But by the time the laddie come back, he was too late. She'd already become a nun. And not only had she become a nun, she had made sure that nobody, nobody would ever want to marry her again. Because she'd mutilated her face. She'd cut off her eyelids, spliced her nose, cut off her top lip and her bottom lip and branded her bony cheeks with hot irons. Well, when the laddie arrived back in St Andrews and saw what she'd done, he was overcome with grief. His bony, bony love now looked like that. He was horrified. And so he went away back to his family in East Lothian and committed suicide through the grief. And they say the lassie, she died no that long ago, no that long later, from grief and remorse. But the story doesn't end there. Because they say that if you happen to be walking along the lane between St Leonard's Kirk and the Pens, just round the corner here, you might come across a figure. A figure of a nun dressed in a long black cloak with a thick black veil hanging over her face and carrying a lantern. And if you should approach her, she'll lift the lantern up and draw back the veil to reveal the horribly mutilated face. And they also say that if you do have the misfortune to meet that spectre, you'll no be long for this world. 
as a cousin of mine found out. Now this cousin stayed down in London, but he was fond of the golf, so he came up one time to stay with me. And when he was staying here, we got invited out to tea, because I was quite friendly with a matron at St Leonard's School, and she stayed just in the pens inside the walls in a wee house. And so the pair of us went down for her tea, and oh, a broad tea she laid on tea. And then, well, my cousin, he liked to smoke his pipe. So he excused himself and went outside for a wee breath of fresh air and a wee smoke. Well, quite some time later he hadn't come back and I left, said my goodbyes and made my way up the pens, looking out to see where my cousin had got to. But oh, I found him. I found him slumped at the root of a tree that grows in that lane beside St Leonard's Kirk. And when I went out to see if he was alright, he looked at me with such fear in his eyes and said, Oh no, you've not come back for me. And then he passed out. Well, I went back down the road and I got my, my friend, the matron, and her husband and we come back up and we managed to carry the poor laddie round to my house and we stayed with him until he came round. And that's when he tell us that as he'd walked up the pens he'd noticed this lane and he decided to go and explore. And as he walked up he saw a light coming towards him. And thinking it was maybe a, a policeman out on patrol, he was all prepared to gang up and pass a few minutes in a blether. But when he got closer, he realised that it wasn't a policeman, but a nun. A nun dressed in a long black cloak with a thick veil over her head. And as he got closer, she picked up her lantern and drew back the veil to reveal, he said, the most horrendously mutilated face. Oh, I've never seen anything like it, he says. And I didn't want to see it again. Well, he got on the first train the next morning and shot off back down to London. And well, I never, I never saw him again. About six months later, I got a letter for him saying that once again he'd been visited by that horrendous spectre. And then about a year later I got word that my pair cousin had been found dead in his rooms. A look of absolute terror on his face and his previously jet black hair had turned pure white. Well, I reckon that that he'd had a visit again from the veiled nun of St Leonard's. <laughs>